on this week's episode of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. It's been a very juicy week in the world of gaming. One of the biggest news stories, China imposing a gaming curfew for minors. What are those details? We'll find out here. Uh, news on the PlayStation 5. Game, getting games running on PlayStation 5 sounds even easier than on PlayStation 4. What does that mean? At time of recording, it is Mass Effect Day, and there are Anthem, there are Mass Effect themed skins for Anthem. We've got some news on Pokemon Go. All the all the goings on that happened at BlizzCon, including the worst kept secret of 2019. In the battle of the free games this month, it is Sony versus PlayStation. What are the games going to be for? Uh, what are the what are the free games gonna what are the free games for this month? We are gonna be we are gonna be finding out right here and in the points and trophies section we have the we have 32 out of the 63 trophies for the latest game from Hideo Kojima Death Stranding. All this coming up right here on the Trophy Achievement Podcast. If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of trophy. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Gen Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last. Sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Ken Z Rachel here and welcome to the latest episode of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, rumours and of course those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. So yeah, it's been a very juicy week in the world of gaming. We've had drama, we've had controversy, we've had uh, governments getting involved and a text message from someone for some reason. Oh, that's my phone. Then again, maybe not. Because well, it sounded like a text message from someone. It's a Facebook notification. That's your Facebook notification bell? Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. But anyway, nevertheless. But anyway, nevertheless. As always, a shout out to Boomerang Rentals. Uh, packages start from as little as three, as little as three ninety nine a month. Package. Uh, Sign up today, get a 21-day free trial. Some of the newest games that just got added to the free trial list include Crash Team Racing, Nitro Fueled. I have since I have since abandoned my run for going for the Platinum Trophy on that game because I'm hopeless on hard difficulty. But nevertheless, I have enjoyed the time I have had with it. Uh, now to just complete grid. But anyway, uh, some of the new games that just got dispatched today include Death Stranding, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, and Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympic Games, which um, I'm not going to be bu- I'm not going to be renting from Boomerang Rentals, sorry folks, but I am going to be buying it outright, and you're going to be getting my thoughts on it as soon as possible. There are no late fees for using the service, you can keep the games as long as you like, or keep them forever at a discounted price on the online, on the Boomerang Rentals store. You can play the latest games, including Death Stranding and Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympics, for as little as $9.99 a month. You can keep the games as long as you like, or keep them forever at a discounted price, as I said. Once you start renting, you're going to start saving. It's been nearly three years since I started using this service, and my goodness me, I've lost count of how much I've saved since I started using the service. I cannot recommend the service enough. It's boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. But first, I believe we have something regarding Fortnite to deal with. Well, Chrome's crashed.
Anyway, there's been a bit of drama regarding Fortnite. I can almost so I can almost see him coming on Keller King Sons drama alert. What is up? Drama alert nation. Let your host Killer King Star. Let's get right, right into, into the news. news. <laughs> yeah, there's been a bit of drama regarding Fortnite this week, and one particular Fortnite player being banned for life. Now, oh what on earth this could be all about? I don't know, but we're just about to find out, shall we? Yep. So, for those of you who have been living under the rock for the last uh, few days, Fortnite millionaire Faze Jarvis made £20,000 from his apology video after being caught cheating on Fortnite. I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. So here we go. Banned Fortnite cheat Faze Jarvis has made... An estimated £20,000 from his apology video, The Sun can reveal. This is actually from The Sun itself, by the way. <laughs> so, here we go. As a result, Fortnite creator Epic Games banned him for life for breaching its rules. Jarvis quickly posted an apology video for cheating, which has been viewed more than 6.7 million times that in just three days we spoke to the market we spoke to marketing and talent agency the fifth who said that jarvis likely earned tens of thousands of pounds from the clip a safe guess is between two is between two figure between the two figures twenty five thousand and thirty six thousand us dollars which is about twenty which is about nineteen thousand to twenty eight thousand pounds I mean, why? Exactly. You do the crime, you'll have to do the time. Exactly. If you, the way that I see it, if you do something dumb like using aimbots, yeah. you're going to get banned. That's why he, that's what, exactly, that's why he got banned, because he was using aimbots. Not exactly a pro if you're using uh, aimbots, are you? Exactly. It was inevitable he was going to get caught eventually. You know, even his mum decided to um, release a statement. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, the fact of the matter is, cheats never prosper. Uh huh. But nevertheless. We've got, uh, but anyway, let's move swiftly on before we give him any more unnecessary publicity. That's right, I said it. Oh my. Oh my. And by the way, folks, we've just finished recording everything wrong with The Apprentice. You'll see the video, you'll see that episode on Saturday. But anyway, here we go. Video game addiction. China imposes gaming curfew for minors. I actually read about this last night and I thought I have got to report on this on my podcast this is too big not to cover let's just hope this is a sign of things to come why well let's find out China is imposing a curfew on online gaming for minors the government has announced gamers under 18 will be banned from playing online between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. They will also be restricted to 90 minutes of gaming on weekdays and three hours on weekends and holidays. It's part of China's latest move to curb video game addiction, which officials say is damaging to children's health. China is one of the world's largest gaming markets. Official government guidelines released on Tuesday include spending limits for minors. Gamers 8 to 16 year old, 16 years old, can spend up to 200 yuan, which is 22 pounds or about 29 dollars per month, while those between 16 and 18 can spend up to 400 yuan, 
which is probably double that, which will be forty-four pounds and about fifty-eight, fifty-nine dollars. Mm-hmm. Which is basically, which is basically the equivalent of a brand new game in U.S. money terms. China is the second largest gaming market in the world, with U.S. global revenue surpassing China for the first time this year due to China's increased regulations on the industry, according to research firm Newzu. What's the background? China has repeatedly criticized video games for negatively affecting young people. In 2018, the government announced an est- the establishment of a gaming regulator in a s- response to concerns about nearsightedness in children. To limit to limit the number of new online games, restrict paying time. Playing time, for goodness sake! Proofread these articles, guys. Goodness me, I love being a grammar Nazi. <laughs> you know, shout out to Pravis Gaming for actually coining the term grammar Nazi. If you, if you, if you, I say Pravis Gaming, he had this um, he had this thing um, on Playgink, which I'm sure you're familiar with, Playgink. Um, PC version. He's actually played scenarios that are called, I kid you not, custom scenarios by the way, g- uh, custom scenarios called grammar Nazis, where it's just intentional grammar and spelling mistakes. Mm. I mean, I love Bravis Gaming. Big shout out to him by the way. You can check it, you can check his channel. I'll just type in Bravis Gaming and just enjoy his content. Anyway. Uh, restrict playing time and develop an age restriction system. The same year, China enacted on enacted a halt on approvals for new video games, which lasted nine months, dealing a significant blow to the lucrative industry. A halt on approvals. What could that mean? Hmm. Well, China is a communist state. This means that all media, like music, including games, has to be approved for sale by the government in that particular country. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. So anyway, some of the largest video game companies responded proactively, but enforcement and reliable age verification have been major concerns. Yeah. Exactly. All the kids have to do is put in a fake birth date. A fake. All all they have to do is put in a fake birth date, and they. I, 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 I can't find any words to describe that. I mean. Yes. I mean, these governments—they vastly underestimate how intelligent these kids are these days, because because kids. Far more intelligent than we give them credit for. Mm-hmm. They always manage to find loopholes to these things. Mm-hmm. Tencent, the world's largest gaming company, careful, addressed criticism by limiting game time to one hour per day for users under 12 and to two hours per day for users between 12 and 18. They also st- started requiring users to prove their age and identity against available state records. Why doesn't that get used more often? But the new guidelines will apply universally to all online gaming platforms operating in China and will address enforcement concerns directly. The administration will work with law enforcement to construct a unified identification system that gaming platforms can use to verify a user's identity and age with government data. A spokeswoman told state-run Jin, Jinhua News Agency. How harmful are video games? Uh, th- this this article's on the BBC website, by the way, folks. Last year, the World, Organi- World Health... Blah. World Health Organization... Thank you! ...listed gaming addiction, which they call gaming disorder, as a mental health condition for the first time, which I still call absolute BS on to this day, as a mental health sufferer myself. The most recent American Psychiatry Association Manual of Mental Disorders does not officially recognise it. Thank you! Instead, listing internet gaming disorder as a condition for further study. I agree with that. 
yeah. World Health Organization, they just, they just thought, screw this, this is this, and no one's going to change that. I've lost count of how many times I've actually reported on the fact that gaming addiction is a mental health disorder. I mean, like I said, this is the sort of thing mental health sufferers like myself can really do without right now. But some countries have identified excessive gaming as a major public health issue, and many have private addiction clinics to treat the condition. There is another way to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's called parenting. I'm going to say it right now, folks. Parenting is far too lenient these days. The only reason why this is an issue now it's because of how long every, how long, how many hours per day kids are playing Fortnite. No, just Fortnite, Bruiser. PUBG, no, no, no. Clans. No, trust me. If there's one game the kids always want to play, it's Fortnite. Mm. Nobody would, nobody talks about PUBG. Nobody talks about Clash of Clans. Nobody talks about the, the mobile games. It's Fortnite or nothing. That's all the kids play. The kids only play Fortnite. Or FIFA if they're a sports fanatic. Just for the record, you... Just for the record, folks, you are aware there are more sports games out there than just FIFA or NFL or Madden NFL or NBA. There are more sports games out there, right? You are aware of this, right? That's why every year I ignore EA Sports because they're absolute garbage. And I play the Formula One games every year. Why? Because I'm an F1 fan. And the only time I really, the only time I spend on the game is either commentating for the Talk of the Devil Racing League or the Extreme Racing League. You can. You can check those guys out, by the way, folks. Big shout out to the big shout out to the boys that run the league, which is probably at most three hours, at most at most three to four hours on a Saturday night for the Talk of the Devil League, and for the Extreme Racing League, probably two hours tops for me commentating on the Extreme One League, and then. I get ready for the Extreme 2 race myself a few hours later. But, I mean, the fact that the, the fact that the government is actually getting involved with something like this shows how bad parenting is these days. I mean, for goodness sake, do the parents even pay attention to the age rating systems? Well, uh, well, or as um, Petunia, or as or as Petunia's cousin said, and um, I believe Prisoner of Azkaban. Yes. If there's something wrong with the bitch, there's something wrong with the pup. That's quoting from the film. That's quoting from the film, by uh, by the way, folks. And the book. Yeah, because I've all, I've only read up to and including the Goblet of Fire, folks. I haven't read the other three books, but I've seen all the Harry Potter films. So, do you think this? Do you think this whole thing about government getting involved with restricting gaming for minors? Do you think that's going to be a th do you, do you think that's going to be a sign of things to come for the future across the world? A bit idiotic, yes, but alarmingly, again, yes. Because, as I mean, the sole responsibility of monitoring how much time minors are playing games should solely be on the parents. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what parents' parents' role is. 
Not to tell me why millennials are, are as bad as they are these days. I, I am a millennial myself, but... But, but, let's, but put it this way, James. We were brought up in a time when we didn't have to rely on technology all the time. I mean, for goodness sake, I said it in a face... I said it in... I said it in, a, in the comment section of the article that regarded... That was talking about the... Um, this whole China monitoring gaming for minors. I said in the comments section, if it wasn't for the fact that my parents introduced me to the Boys Brigade when I was 10 years old. Goodness me, I feel, goodness me, I feel old. 16 years ago, I started at the Boys Brigade. Granted, I've not been there for a while, but I definitely need to get back there at some point. Because I'm an officer now at the Boys Brigade after getting my Queen's badge eight years ago. If it wasn't for the fact that I had the Boys Brigade, I don't even know what I'd be doing on a Friday night. That, that's just a perfect example of how damn well my parents raised me. But anyway, on to the next... On to the next story. And, uh... Uh, have you played The Outer Worlds yet, James? No. I'd highly recommend it. Especially with this latest, uh... Piece as, of news. As a matter of fact, although someone's asked me to do the Outer Worlds, but it's a, it's on Game Pass. Boys, what do you think? Nah. Tails, shut up. No, nah, you're right, voted. I'd say leave it as well. Oh, Sonic, shut up. <laughs> Oh, what you gonna do, eh? Are you gonna challenge us up? It's I on mean... Game Pass. <laughs> it's on Game Pass. I have been playing it, and it is really good. And I am going to do this article, so you two are just gonna shut up and listen! Fine. Anyway, so, this, uh, so, um, so, how much do you like white chocolate? Love it. Guilty as charged as well. The reason I say that is because, uh, the Outer Worlds team decided to prank their boss, who, by the way, hates white chocolate, with two little Easter eggs. I hope the Easter eggs are covered in white chocolate. <laughs> Uh, one, of the, one of the more bizarre segues into this news article, but nevertheless, here we go. The creator of the original Fallout and co-director of The Outer Worlds, Tim Kaine, loves chocolate so much that developer Obsidian has a Slack channel dedicated to daily tasting sessions. To immortalise their boss's addiction of cocoa, the dev team deliberately snuck a few Easter eggs into The Outer Worlds. Not literal chocolate eggs, though, sadly. Oh. Hamburgers. During development, the Outer Worlds staff had daily chocolate meetings arranged over Slack by Kane, who would begin by sending out the details of that day's confectionery. He explained the process to PC Gamer. He'd write how he'd write if it's single origin, what if it's single origin, what country it's from. The cocoa percentage. Uh, cacao. Proofread these articles. The cocoa percentage. Any flavoring agents. We all eat a piece, and we and we talk about it, and then I blog it, and so that way I have a list of everything chocolate I have eaten since 1993, and whether I liked it. What? He's been doing this since 1993. <laughs> For goodness sake, my Milky Bar was the wrong direction that day. What bars? Milky Bar! The Milky Bars are on me! The Milky Bar get is stunned. How do I still remember that advert all these years later? How do I still remember that? Oh, the Milky Bar get. Anyway, having kept detailed records of his likes and dislikes for 26 years, Kane is clear on the fact he has an aversion. To white chocolate. And the team know it too. 
So the Outer Worlds lead designer jokingly snuck an item called Tim Kane's White Chocolate Yummies. But Kane caught and deleted it before shipping it since it was a piece of text and thus easily found... Oh! Flipping hamburgers! <laughs> Spawn's board. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> But oh, 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 actually, actually, hold up, hold up, hold up. But the designer was one step ahead. He went to an artist and had them write that into the art. So you can't search for it. And it's on a character that you were highly unlikely to kill. <laughs> but he didn't know I was playing a game where I was killing everybody. Because I wanted to make sure you could do that. And it's fun. I killed that person and saw it. And then I went to his office, but it was too late. We had already sorted. We had already sorted, so it's in the game. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, massive sucker punch! <laughs> the second white chocolate based Easter egg in Roseway at the bar called the 17th Bar. There's a, sec oh, no, uh, there's a second white chocolate-based Easter egg in Roseway at the bar called the 17th Bar. It's a nod to a prank a member of the development team pulled on Kane where they hid 17 bars of white chocolate in his office and informed him of the fact in an anonymous note made of cut-out letters. <laughs> that, is that is brilliant. <laughs> Oh, hello. To this day, Kane has never found the 17th bar of white chocolate. So then, Tyson, the level designer... So then, so then Tyson, the level designer, he was sitting next door. He put a bar in Roseway called the 17th bar. That you can go and get drinks at. When you walk in, it's got that flickering light, he says. I just wanted you to, I just wanted you to remember the 17th bar. So talk about an easter egg that doesn't mean anything, except to people who were at Obsidian working on this project. The, the Outer Worlds has been called the spiritual successor of Fallout, and in Dan Sta Stapleton's review on IGN, called it a creative and well-made take that's both familiar and new all at once. Let's put it this way, guys. If I put more time into the Outer Worlds, I think we could have a serious contender for 2019 Game of the Year. Yes, even dethroning Kingdom Hearts. I'm... That's, that's brilliant. I take my hat off to the guys for mm -hmm. being able to do that. Stick it to the mine, that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice, nice, uh, nice School of Rock reference, by the way. What? Nice School of Rock reference. Yep. Indeed. Oh, love School of Rock. The film, by the way, folks. I haven't seen the stage show yet. But anyway. Getting games running on PlayStation 5 sounds even easier than on PlayStation 4. This is on PushSquare.com. Oh, how appropriate, because Square. PlayStation, yeah. Yes. Well, so it's a, it's a PlayStation-only website. I mean, fair play, fair play some. So, the next-gen console was developer-friendly. I mean... So, I mean, there's the prototype there, James. What are your thoughts on it? Looks a bit UGLI. Okay. Looks a bit tedious. Mm, yeah, it looks it looks more like uh, one of those mixer boards. As a matter of fact, I kind of I think it actually looks like one of those scaled down models of a building pro star prototype. Building what? You know, you know when a construction company is showing um, a local authority building, they would normally make a very small scale model. Yeah. Kind of make it kind of look like that. 
But at least these guys actually put thought into them. At least these guys actually put thought into uh, what the uh, prototype looks like rather than the candidates on The Apprentice. Ooh, more on that later. <laughs> yeah, you'll find out why in uh, this week's episode of Everything Wrong with The Apprentice. So here we go. This is what we've got. The PlayStation 3 was notoriously tricky to work with, thanks to its complicated hardware infrastructure. Yeah, no wonder it, but no wonder it bombed compared to the Xbox 360. It had lots of potential, but many studios struggled with the convoluted nature of the cell processor. Learning from this unfortunate developer experience, Sony made the PlayStation 4 dramatically easier to work with. It dropped the complex tech in favour of something much closer to working with standard PCs, allowing studios to get games running much more efficiently. By the sound of it, PS5 is going to go another step further. Hardware details are relatively scarce, but we do know that many teams have access to PS5 dev kits. According to PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan, the feedback so far has been very positive. One thing that makes me particularly optimistic that what we're hearing from developers and publishers is the ease in which they are able to get code running on PS5 is way beyond any experience they've had on any other PlayStation platform. He told Games Industry in a new interview, with PS4 already a big step in the right direction, it seems PS5 is, even, is an even better console to work with from a developer's point of view. Of course, this will benefit everyone in the long run, making the platform simpler to develop for will making the platform simpler to develop for will mean a better experience for studios and potentially better games for consumers. Oh my word, I'm already looking forward to the next console generation. Holy smokes, that's all that's only like next year. But mind you, come to think of it, does the Nintendo Switch fall under the eighth generation or the ninth generation? I'd say 8. Okay. Let's double, let's double check that. Alright, actually. Because I don't think Nintendo's um, doing... Alright, let's have a look. Hard to believe that we're approaching the ninth generation of gaming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Nintendo Switch is definitely part of the eighth generation. Mm. As Nintendo always is a generation behind. But I don't see that as a bad thing. Well, Nintendo's ethos is always about uh, playing decent games on dated hardware. I mean, for example, the Wii was not that far off from the GameCube. Meanwhile. The Wii U was was a drastic commercial failure. First, because nobody knew what it was initially. Nintendo screwed up the marketing campaign. By the way, once again on Saturday, we will um, think of this as an instruction guide on how not to brand a product. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, here we go. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, on to our next story. And oh, goody gumdrops. Yeah, today, today at time of recording, it is Mass Effect Day. November 7th. Yep. And 7 uh, is is on the, uh, the Mass Effect armor throughout the Mass Effect games. Well, mainly the Mass Effect trilogy. I mean... I mean, if the Mass Effect Trilogy remaster came out tomorrow, would you buy it? I would be a bit hesitant after how bad Andromeda was. I will admit, looking back on it, Andromeda wasn't all it cracked up to be. I mean, don't get me wrong, I did have it in my top 10 games of 2017. But looking back on it, probably not the best decision. Mm -hmm. But... 
I'd happily buy the remastered. I'd happily buy the remaster, the trilogy remaster, if it was out tomorrow. If I, I just hope that should they decide to should EA decide to remaster this, heaven forbid, that they actually include all the DLC as part of the remaster, rather than having us buy it separately. I really hope the DLC is included in it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the trilogy itself, over 300 awards it won throughout its five-year life, throughout its five-year span. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most critically acclaimed trilogies in video game history. Co controversial ending aside. Mm. But anyway... Anthem has new Mass Effect theme skins for today. And I will admit, they actually look really good. They look really, really good. Because you've got Turian, Garrus by the way, the Quarian, Tali, the Asari, um, oh, we are. that's the one, thank you. It's been a while, bear with me. And then you've course, and then of course you've got the Krogan, uh, Krogan not Rex. and Grunt from Mass Effect 2. Yeah. Yeah. So, the article here says tomorrow, uh, but today, I'm... Um, just, I'm going to change that to today. Today is November 7th, and November 7th is N7 Day, the annual event in which we all come together to celebrate the magic of Mass Effect. And try not and try not to be sad about, well, pretty much everything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> to mark this year's remembrance, Bioware has added new Mass Effect-themed cosmetics to its latest game, Anthem, including four javelin skins, a new wrap, and a new emote. As reported by GameSpot, each class of Javelin, that's the power armor you run and fly around in an Anthem, has its own skin based on a non-human species from the Mass Effect, from Mass Effect. The Ranger Javelin gets the Turian treatment, the Storm is Asari, the Interceptor is Quarian, and the Colossus is, no surprise here, modeled after Krogan's. That's clever, very well played. Very well played on that front. The new emote is the Shepherd Shuffle. Oh no! The Shepherd Shuffle, everybody do the Shepherd Dance! Oh, Assuming the right control. Oh, good grief! control. Oh, how, how, right how awkward is that dance, though? The painfully awkward move seen on the floor of his favourite dance club at the Citadel. Oh, <laughs> While the wrap is a graphical effect that gives all four armor skins a Mass Effect Andromeda look. Okay. Despite the, celebratory, despite the celebratory nature of N7 Day, these skins and such are not being given out as gifts. Each skin goes for 61,000 coins, the in-game currency, or 850 shards, the premium currency. Shards cost... $10 for a pack of ten fifty, which puts the real money cost of the skins at a little north of $8 each. So, four skins plus the wrap. About, around about, around about $40, roughly? Uh-huh. Oh, no, actually, I had, actually, scratch that. Which puts the real, uh, so that's $32, roughly. The Andromeda Initiative wrap is 36,000 coins or 600 shards which will probably be around six dollars roughly mm -hmm. an emote is 23,000 coins or 475 shards which will be just under five dollars probably so 32 dollars for the skins plus six dollars for 
the wrap, which puts it to 38. And we'll just round it up to five dollars. You're looking at around about forty-three dollars to get the end, the uh, Mass Effect pack. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, a bit expensive if you're buying all of them at once. But fair play to Bioware for actually doing that. If the game actually works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of my friends tried to stream Anthem. A uh, couple of months ago, and they couldn't get in to a server. Which begs the question: I wonder if next year's N Seven Day is going to be the announcement of the Mass Effect Twilight Dream Remaster. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first, folks. Next year's N7 Day, probably the announcement of the Mass, Mass Effect Remaster. The Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster. Mm-hmm. Especially the first game. My word, that needs a facelift. Now we've got a couple of... Oh, now we've got something here regarding Pokemon Go. Now, there's been mysterious components that have been put into the game. So, here we go. You can now go after Team Rocket leaders in Pokemon Go. Using mysterious components dropped after defeating Team Rocket grunts, you can build a rocket radar and track down Cliff, Sierra or Arlo. These three Team Go rocket leaders can be battled for rewards including a shiny shadow Pokemon. And rumour has it, it's probably Meowth. Given the fact that Meowth was Team Rocket's psychic in the TV show. Or Persia. Or Persian. Yeah. No, I, th- I, think, that, I, think, we would, I think we would keep Persian for uh, Giovanni. Giovanni. Yeah. I mean... I was actually watching, I was actually watching back on one of the old episodes of the original series of Pokemon, and it just clicked on me that they foreshadowed Mewtwo's debut into the Pokemon universe in like the TV series and films, but we didn't pick up on it until the first film was actually released. How cool was that? Finding component, mysterious components in Pokemon Go is fairly simple. There are rewards for defeating Team Ro- Go Rocket Grunts that have been messing up Pokestops for a while now. Taking down a Team Go Rocket Grunt has a chance of dropping a mysterious component which you can collect until you have six. Then it's time for stage two. Building a rocket radar. When you When you collect your sixth mysterious your sixth mysterious component, you'll be given the option to combine them all to create a rocket radar. This will intercept transmissions and enable you to track down the three Team Go rocket leaders. And then we're on to stage three. Battling the Pokemon Go Team Go rocket leaders. The Pokemon Go Team Rocket that the Pokemon Go Team Go Rocket Leaders, try saying that three times fast, mm. are Cliff, Sierra and Arlo. Fighting them plays out in a similar way to the trainer and grunt battles. Defeating them will earn you 1,000 Stardust and two things from the rewards list. Max Revive, Revive, Max Potion, Unova Stone and Sinnoh Stone. The Unova and Sinnoh Stones are what you use for... Evo- the, the Sinnoh Stone and Unova Stones are evolution items, basically. Right, so far, it looks like a rocket leader will always be, use a shield on your first charge first charge attack. And it seems to be using shadow Pokemon from this list. So here we go, let's see what they have. The first Pokemon 
for Cliff Sierra and Olo will always be Meowth, Sneasel, and Cypher. The second Pokemon will be a choice of Sandslash, Snorlax, and Flygon for Cliff, Hypno, Lapras, and Sableye for Sierra, and Gyarados, Magnezone, which is the evolution of Magneton, and Crobat for Arlo. And then you've got the third Pokemon being Tyranitar, Torterra, or Infernape for Cliff, Alakazam, Houndoom, or Gardevoir, Gardevoir for Sierra, and Charizard, Dragonite, and Scyzer for Arlo. So, so far it looks like the first Pokemon will be dropped when you defeat them. The first Pokemon will be dropped. So it will be either Meowth, Sneasel, or Scyther. When you defeat them. And has a chance of being a Shiny. So we could end up with a Shiny Meowth, Shiny Sneasel, or Shiny Scyther. It was about that. And, hello. It looks like Pokemon Go is adding ranked Battle League PvP in early 2020. Ooh, that'll be juicy. But now on to our next... Now on to our next news article, and it's regarding... BlizzCon and everything that happened there, including, like I said at the top of the broadcast, the worst kept secret of 2019. Oh, what's that? Nope. Diablo 4? Diablo 4. <laughs> Once it decides to load... Mind you, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for that. Oh, oh, heads up, heads up, we are getting somewhere. Why are we waiting? So while we're waiting on the article to load, eventually. And that jingle is yet another game screw up of the week. And no, 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 no. This ain't a screw up. This ain't a screw up. It is instead one of these. Excellent. The second episode, second gaming, a uh, better gaming drama of the week. Yep. So, what on earth could this drama be? More than half of Death Stranding's team defected from Konami. Gee, I can't imagine why. I can almost hear the sound of the uh, pachinko machines already. Yep. More than half of Death Stranding's development team is made up of former Metal Gear staff who followed Hideo Kojima to, to the new Kojima Productions analysis of the game's credits reveals. Of the some 120 core developers who worked on the game at Kojima Productions, 67 worked at Kojima's former Konami studio and 62 worked on Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. The new Kojima Productions president, At least. Sh Sh Shinji Hirano, was previously a Konami executive and division president. My word, he made a my word, he made a good decision after that. Uh, virtually all of Death Stranding's lead design and art positions came from former Metal Gear staff, 
with most newcomers working in programming positions. The core team of around 250 people worked on Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain. Hideo Kojima left Konami under difficult circumstances in 2015 after he was reportedly ordered to spend the final six out months of his employment working alone on a different floor from his team. Good grief. That's the first one I've heard about that part of the, <laughs> the part of the fiasco. Yep, the um, drama between Konami and Kojima. Yep, he was actually banned from attending the Game Awards that year. Yes, Razor, we know. But of course, I went back and watched a clip from the 2016 Game Awards. And they... It was a case that... Um, um, uh, Jeff Keighley, that's the name of the host. That's the name of the host. Jeff Keighley asked Hideo why he didn't want to accept the award that was accepted by Kiefer Sutherland, who played Snake in Metal Gear Solid V. And the simple answer was, that's blood on my hands that I don't want. But he was there, but Hideo was there at the 2016 ceremony to accept the... Industry Icon Award. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's been at this for 30 plus years and still going strong. That just shows how incredible he is. The publisher eventually disbanded Kojima Productions, but Kojima later reformed the studio as an independent company to work on Death Stranding. The new studio has been, has up until now been funded by Sony Interactive Entertainment. More than 70 Guerrilla Games developers worked on Death Stranding, the game's credits reveal, as well as a various as well as a ver as well as various motion capture and CGI support studios. Again, please read these articles. More than 40 guerrilla engineers worked on the game, including Horizon Zero Dawn's lead game programmer, Tommy Deruz. Tommy Deruz. Lead programmer, Frank Com Compagna, uh, Compagna. And technical director, Michel Van der Liu. I don't even know how to pronounce half these names. Mm -hmm. Horizon's art director, Jan Bart Van Beek, lead environmental, lead environment artist Kim Van Heest, and technical art director Martin Van der, Van der Gag also worked on Death Stranding. Horizon's senior quest designer, James Newper is even credited for guest design on the Kon on the Kojima title. Death Stranding's Death, Death Stranding credits also mention first party studios Insomniac, best known for the Spider Man, and Bend for Days Gone as support partners. However, unlike Gorilla, no actual personnel are listed. That's interesting. So we had BlizzCon last week. So let's find out what happened. There we go. Note to self. Never use GameSpot. 
Anyway. Oh, hello. That's something I wasn't expecting. Nevertheless, here we go. The, right. This year's BlizzCon revealed two major new games and two expansions to Blizzard's other existing franchises. Overwatch 2 is official, bringing co-op missions and a pile of new multiplayer stuff, including new heroes, along with it. Diablo 4 has also finally made its debut, and it did so with enough blood and grind to show Blizzard is trying to dif differentiate from Diablo 3. Error of 37! Error of 37! Error of 37! It should be error number one! Then you can't log into the game! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Diablo 4, I've said it numerous times uh, throughout this podcast this week, that Diablo 4, the worst kept secret of 2019. Everyone knew they were going to be announcing Diablo 4. At the start of the opening ceremony, Blizzard president J. Allen Brack briefly announced, addressed last month's controversy over Hearthstone player... Blitz Chung's Hong Kong statement and his suspension. Brack apologised, but didn't get into specifics, change the suspension, or speak to how Blizzard would treat such issues differently in the future. Hmm, why am I not surprised? Trying to look, trying to look good on the interview day, trying to hide what's happened in the past. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you know what? You can't pull the wool over our eyes! You know what, they might as well, um, they might as well nominate Andrew Murphy for that. Apparently he is normally very good at that um, sweeping shady stuff under the rug. Andrew, oh, oh Andrew, oh the, uh, oh the boss of EA, Andrew Wilson. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well played. Very well played. Okay. That controversy hasn't completely blown over. Protesters have gathered outside the Anaheim, California Convention Center, sporting free Hong Kong signs while giving away free t-shirts. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! That's gone down very well, folks! So, here we are. Let's have a look at everything they announced. Overwatch 2 is in development. It's a full-on sequel with a focus on co-op and new PvE modes, player versus environment. There are story missions and hero missions. Does this mean we could end up having a single-player campaign? Possibly. In which you'll be able to level up your heroes and Overwatch 2's PvP additions like new maps and heroes will be coming to Overwatch 1, as well for a shared multiplayer environment. So does that mean that players from Overwatch 2 can play players from Overwatch 1? I don't know. That I'm on board with. What's more, all of your skins cosme and cosmetics you've earned in Overwatch will carry over to the sequel. Nice! So you won't lose anything jumping over to Overwatch 2. The first new hero, a Canadian named Sojo Sojo Sojourn, was announced, but we don't know what her abilities are. Game director Jeff Kaplan also has no idea when Overwatch 2 will be released. Take your time, boys, as long as we get a good game out of it rather than having it rushed and full of bugs and glitches. A delayed game is good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Yup. So three water. When did he say this? I don't know. I can't remember. <sighs> R.I.P. Water Sam. He actually took a. Th it was a fifty percent pay cut after how bad the Wii U failed. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Diablo 4 was announced, and it looks absolutely profane. A true sequel to Diablo 2 that's all about satanic rituals, occult symbols, and lots of blood. 
Blizzard opened BlizzCon 2019 with extended with an extended CG trailer setting up the story, and then followed up with a few minutes of gameplay footage. There's multiple panels over the week. Uh, there were multiple panels over the weekend that dove deeper into Diablo 4, but what we do know is that it has a non-linear story set in an open world that you can explore at your leisure. Though it's probably no surprise, there will be no offline mode and won't be releasing anytime soon. Let's just hope they can handle the server overload and prevent error 37 again. And we have a new expansion for World of Warcraft. Leroy Dragon! What the heck? Ow, I think I lost one of my ears now for that. Anyway, World of Warcraft's next expansion is called Shadowlands. It releases next year and will take place to an alternate realm of death and decay where they must choose one of several factions to align with to f align with to fight against Sylvanas. The trailer was positively bananas and Sylvanas dueling with Sylvanas dueling Bolvar, the Lich King before using his helmet to tear open the sky and obliterate the barrier between Azeroth and the Shadowlands? Oh my word, I need to see this trailer now! Make sure switch the light off as well. Light off. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Business is starting to pick up already. Okay, uh, do not mess with him anytime soon. Okay, that, that's cool, that's cool. And those arrows are doing no damage to him. What the heck? Oh, mama! Okay. Whoa! Who am I? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, did he seriously just kill her? Oh, 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 my sneaky. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> These cinematics are so damn good.
And she's just like, nope, you're not using the hammer on me today. No freaking way! <laughs> she just destroyed the freaking crown! She just destroyed the freaking crown! What the heck? <laughs> and I am the crown. Oh, 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 Blizzard, you crazy maniacs! That is one of the best Blizzard trailers I've seen for World of Warcraft. Make sure I get you in shot. Make sure I keep you in shot as well. I'm gonna talk about that, but obviously you had to see the StarCraft 2 trailers. Now those were my favorite ones. What? They were announced at BlizzCon as well? Nope. In terms of the best trailers I've seen from Blizzard, I'd say StarCraft 2's. Anyway. Right, anyway. So, like any expansion, the Shadow Shadowlands will implement sweeping changes to most of World of Warcraft's current systems and progression. We'll have... A complete overview. Uh, yada, 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 yada. Oh, and uh, World of Warcraft Classics next update comes on November 12th. Okay. And we've got an expansion for Hearthstone Descent of Dragons. And yes, it's got a bunch more dragons in it. The surprise? Hearthstone is getting a new mode called Battlegrounds. Inspired by also battle genre, it's in beta. It's in beta soon. Okay. Very interesting. But now we're on to the penultimate sex set se uh, section of the show, and it's that time of the month once again. Battle of the three games for November twenty nineteen. <laughs> Now, for those who may not be, hang on. Uh, now, for those who may not be aware, um, last month Sony managed to win the Battle of the Free Games for October because, for crying out loud, Last of Us Remastered and MLB The Show 2019, mm -hmm. which I've tried. MLB The Show, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't really recommend it in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, PlayStation Plus. For November 2019, let's have a look and see what we have. We've got Neo and Outlast 2. So. So Neo and Outlast 2. Now, Outlast, now the Outlast games, oh my word. Uh, do, don't play, don't play them in the dark. And uh, now Neo is a game that's from 
from software. They make it to Dark Souls. And Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. I, I like and Outlast 2. Need we say more beyond that? But uh, Xbox's lineup. Um, we've got Show up for the Xbox One side of the lineup. Uh, now I know this sounds like we're giving Xbox an unfair advantage here, but PlayStation only have two games to give out every month, mm -hmm. compared to like three, four, possibly five or six that they used to have until the PS3 and Vita got discontinued. Yeah. For Xbox, the Xbox One side of the lineup, it's uh, Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, and The Final Station. Now, I've not played either of those games yet, but I've got Sherlock Holmes, and we've also got, for the first half of November, uh, until next Friday, which will be tomorrow at time of recording, Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Well, of course they'd have a Star Wars game in there because we've got a new Star Wars film on the way. I know. Yeah. But hey, not long until your first midnight screening, eh? Hey, you wanted to come along. I know, but... <laughs> Is part of you regretting that decision? Nope. Absolutely not. Because we get to go, because we get to watch the entire sequel trilogy over the course of the whole evening. Yes, I know. So anyway, and we've got Joyride Turbo, which was one of the games that was on Game Pass at one point, mm -hmm. and now you'll be able to keep it forever as part of Games with Gold. I mean, let's compare the two: PlayStation, Neo, From Software. From Software have a reputation for difficult games like Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Outlast. And Sekiro. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, yes! I've actually played it. I've actually played Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And folks. believe it or not, some clever spud been able to mod Sekiro <laughs> to make the protagonist. Ready for it? Go on. Woody. What? <laughs> Hang on, what? <laughs> Fraser, not now. Stay focused. I got what? Sekiro Shadows Die. Mamma mia, he's not joking. He's not joking. <laughs> he's not joking. Someone point at the water hole. What the heck? Nani, indeed. Nani! <laughs> that was brilliant and then Outlast 2 Outlast scary as all hell Outlast 2 probably one step further than that one step backward I'd say the first one is the most scariest um, for, well based on what I heard well I wouldn't make a judgement on it until you've played the game yourself <sighs> but yeah, um, but I mean, with the Xbox lineup, apart from Star Wars, nothing, nothing really stands out. Yes, I know. I mean, it's about this time of year when um, the um, James with Gold lineup is pretty dire. Hmm, that's one way of putting it. And on top of that. I don't think um, game, um, game Pass line, Game Pass's additions went up too much either. Well, so who do we give this month to? Sony. Two in a row for Sony, not very often they can say that. But nevertheless, here we go. We're on to the last section of the show. We're only able to go through 
32 of the 63 trophies. But nevertheless... Well, let's go on about that. Yep. Because that bring... Because uh, we can't exactly go through the... Hidden trophies. Yeah. But again, fair play to them. But uh, once you get the 31 hidden trophies, you get... The Elusive Platinum Trophy! And that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! <laughs> yes, points and trophies time. And we mentioned Death Stranding on the podcast a few times, so let's go through the trophy list. The game comes out tomorrow, and I've seen people who have been, who are using Boomerang Rentals, they've got their copies of Death Stranding getting dispatched today, so they can play them tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's have a look. So we we can only go through the regular trophies at the moment, and uh, as always, in the case of trophies, I go from bronze to silver to gold, and then, of course, the elusive platinum trophy, which I have seven of. By the way, I tried to go for the platinum for Crash Team Racing Nitro Car uh, Nitro, Nitro Fi Field. I knew what I meant, <laughs> but I decided to abandon that run because I am hopeless on hard difficulty. I, I actually tried racing on hard mode last night, and I finished last on every single occasion. Okay. So yeah, I, so yeah, I decided to abandon my run for the Platinum on that one. But nevertheless, here we go. The following trophies are rated at bronze. Well traveled, travel 80 kilometers and complete an order. Well connected, reach connection level 3 with a facility. Trailblazer, upgrade all types of structure to the maximum level. Post the post guides the present, read 100 mails. The past guides the present, read 100 interviews. The automation revolution, complete a standard order with a delivery bot. Snooze and soothe, heal by sleeping for the first time. Rest in pieces. In a BT area, cut an, um cut an umbilical cord for the first time without the BT noticing. Pumped porter. Deliver 3,000 kilos of cargo, or 3 tons. Public server porter. Dispose of chiralium contaminated cargo in the crater lake for the first time. Prominent porter. Reads grade 10 in any delivery evaluation category. Master builder. Goodness me, Lego movie cliche. Hmm. Build at least one of every type of structure, including signs, ladders, and climbing anchors. Hooked on, hooked on delivering? Deliver 700 items of cargo. Homo Faber, fabricate all weapons and equipment. Good Samaritan, deliver your first piece of lost cargo. Giver of gifts, make your first donation of weapons, equipment, etc., Everyday delivery. Complete a standard order. Delivery is done. Complete 36 standard orders. Childminder. Reach maximum connection level with BB. Catcher crusher. Defeat a catcher. Building bridges. Reach b bridge link grade 1. Boots are porters, my friend. Change footwear for the first time. Birth of a legend. Complete 10 premium deliveries with an evaluation of legend or legend of legends in every single category. Apprentice builder. Build your first structure. Signs, ladders, and climbing anchors also count. Work with me. Ah, there we go. Any porter in a storm. Trade with another porter for the first time. All roads lead to UCA. Complete your first road. A shout in the dark. Send a shout out and have it returned for the first time. A helping hand. Issue your first supply request. A baby blessing. Get a like from BB. Best beloved. Reach the maximum connection level with all facilities. Growth of a legend. Complete 20 premium deliveries with an evaluation of legend of legends on in all categories. Which is, a, which is the only silver trophy at the moment. And the only gold trophy at the moment is Growth of a Legend. Complete 20 premium deliveries with an evaluation of Legends of Legends in all categories. And the best beloved is the silver trophy. Reach, connect, reach the maximum connection level with all facilities. 
complete all those and you get the trophy entitled Greatest of Great Deliverers, which is obtained all Great Death Stranding trophies, and that gets you the Elusive Platinum Trophy! <laughs> yep. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized and following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day series notifications. Go on, so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. The previous video on the left, podcast playlist on the right. You've got The Apprentice to look forward to tomorrow. And for now, I'm off to get ready for Leeds. And I'll see you guys next week. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.